if you're starting a new job, you ought to at least comb your hair. Comb my hair? Baby, I paid $25 to have it style like this. They teased it for an hour. It looks like they got it mad. <laughs> oh? You're showing more colors than a red rooster in a pumpkin patch. Love your country, you are, sweetie. I'll keep you in mind for Rube Park. <laughs> What's going on with that boy, Jibs? Oh, he's just feeling spry because he got himself a brand new job working in a butcher shop. Butcher shop? Yeah, he told me he was going to be a flesh peddler. Well, he told me the same thing. But he said that meant being an agent. What's an agent? Well, he finds work and other folks does it. That suits Jethro, all right. <laughs> well, I ain't here yet, so I think I'll call New York and see if there's any Broadway openings I should get in for. Jethro, uh, Granny and me is a mite confused. Don't flesh peddling mean uh, working in a butcher shop? Oh man. How did a boy genius like me get born into this family of hayseed? Now, listen. When I give out my bio, would you mind if I said I was adopted? Personally, I would appreciate it. <laughs> Your limousine is ready, Mr. Bodine. You all right, you chauffeur? Yes, sir. Ain't that a girl? That's right, sweetie. I hired me a big mess of girls. I gotta give them something to do. <laughs> oh, refer any calls to my office. Where's your office? I got the whole fifth floor down at Mr. Drysdale's bank building. J.B. Enterprises Incorporated. What does the J.B. stand for? Jethro Bodine. <laughs> well, Miss Holloway, my new employee incentive system that you thought so little of is already paying off. Well, I'm glad to hear it, Chief. Yes. You know that secretary downstairs you refer to as Dumb Bunny? Yes. Well, she just made a deal to lease the entire fifth floor to J.B. Enterprises Incorporated. <laughs> Who are they? Only one of the biggest talent agencies in the entertainment field. I never heard of them. That's because you're not show business oriented. But Bunny is. She's a stripper. <laughs> it turns out that she's got it up here, too. She got J.B. Enterprises to sign a firm, ironclad, two-year lease. Fully dressed? <laughs> Jealous? <laughs> yeah, read this and weep, Vassar graduate. And after pulling this coup, Bunny can quit her nighttime job. I can't even make out J.B.'s signature. So he flunked penmanship, but he graduated magna cum loot. When is he moving in? This morning. I've just come back from inspecting the fifth floor. Oh, it's fabulous. I've had been working there all night. New furniture, new carpets, new drapes. Oh, take a look at this special drapery material I had created just for this important agent. You, you must have spent a fortune. <laughs> Not spent, Miss Hathaway. Invested. These big talent agencies gross in tens of millions. Why, just their account alone would be fabulous. May I come in? Come in, Bunny. Come in. Thank you, Pussycat. Pussycat? You bring in 5000 a month and you can call me Hound Dog. Uh, Bunny, I was just telling Miss Hathaway about that beautiful coup de finance you pulled off last evening. Oh, you caught my act at the club last night. <laughs> I was referring to that lease with J.B. Enterprises. And as to your nighttime employment, you can give that up now. Oh, gee, I don't want to get out of show business. <laughs> oh, you're never out of it, dear. I've seen you walk from your desk to the water cooler. Isn't it sweet the way the tellers whistle and stomp their feet? <laughs> Just darling. I found a note on my desk that you wanted to see me. Oh, yes, of course. I just wanted to give you this as a little token of my appreciation. Uh, open it. Oh, oh, shouldn't it? Oh, pussy cat. It's Marvy. Well, it's no more than you deserve. I hope it fits. I'll try it on. No, 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 no not here, Bunny. In there. In there. <laughs> Chief, she's got it. Up here. Up and walk. Uh, why don't you take one back to your desk and do something earth-shaking like getting your notebook? When can I meet the fabulous J.B.? When I do. He's coming by this morning so that I can personally escort him to his new office. Good morning, Miss Jane, sweetie. Uh, Jethro? Hi, Miss Drysdale, baby. How about Jethro? 
<laughs> How do you like my Nero jacket? Oh, very sharp. Well, it's just fabulous. Why don't you go down and show it to the girls in the secretarial pool? First, you and me got to get together. Oh, not this morning, Jethro. I'm very busy. Miss Hathaway, I have some dictation. Right. i see you later, Jethro. Hey, but Mr. Drysdale, oh, honey. Some other time, I'm expecting a very important man. Uh, go down to the vault and watch them count pennies. <laughs> Take a memo to all employees. Mr. Drysdale, lover, I'm supposed to see you. And I'm supposed to see somebody else. Well, that's life. Drop by tomorrow. Hey, I can't wait till tomorrow. All right, all right. Just sit in Miss Hathaway's office. I'll get to you as quick as I can. <laughs> of all mornings for that idiot to bug me. Now, where was I? Memo to all employees. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Subject. How do I look? Mr. Drysdale. Sit down and be quiet. Oh, you look great. Say, would you do me a favor? Anything for you, pussycat. Look, there's a big kid outside. Now, take him down to the candy store, get him some lollipops and jawbreakers. Right. Hi, buddy, baby. JB! Let's see. Subject of memo. Employee incentive system. So far... <laughs> what did she call? Did she throw? <laughs> Sounded like JB. <laughs> no, it couldn't be. <laughs> J.B., that's me. See you later, Mr. Drysdale. Bundy's going to take me up to the fifth floor and show me my new offices. <laughs> Steady. Miss Hathaway, there are some nitroglycerin tablets in my desk drawer. Get them quickly. Chief, I, I didn't know you had a heart condition. I haven't. Take the nitroglycerin up to the fifth floor, give it to Bunny, and push her out the window. <laughs> Howdy, Ellie Mae. Don't be scared of Fairchild. I'll tell him we're all friends. Well, doggy, this is Cousin Roy. Little Roy Hall, Jason. Howdy, Granny. Mr. Clampett? Come in, come in. I'm sort of worried about that big old bear. Oh, he won't bite you. He's downright affectionate. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. Why didn't you let us know you was coming, Roy? I'd have had company riddles ready. Well, I ain't aiming to put my feet under the table, Granny. I just stopped by to say howdy. Well, ain't you gonna be in town for a spare Roy? Well, more than likely, but I don't want to be no bother. Oh, we're proud to have you. Don't forget to fetch in his fiddle and his banjo and his guitar. <laughs> Granny, don't go asking Roy to play music right off. We ain't even past the time of day yet. Oh, you're right, kid. I'm sorry. When did you leave Bug Tussle, Roy? Early Monday morning, Granny. That's a good time of day. And now that we've passed it, let's hear some music. <laughs> get settled in first. Well, I don't mind, Mr. Clampett. I gotta rehearse some numbers for my record album. Record album? Gee whiz, Roy. I didn't know you was what you call one of them Ray Carden artists. Well, I ain't yet, Ellie. But this feller from this big record company heard me last Saturday and asked me to come out here to see about it. Where was you playing, Roy? The new crawdad room of the Bug Tussle Biltmore. <laughs> You mean to tell me that they have added on to the Biltmore? It already was the biggest hotel in the county. Well, now they've built on a partial second story. Do you play that regular role? 
Well, every Saturday night I play in Bug Tussle, and then during the week I play the small town. And now you're gonna make records. Well, the deal ain't set yet, Granny. What I need's an agent to dicker for me. Well, Jethro's an agent. Yeah, what they call a flesh peddler. Well, I got a lot to peddle. <laughs> Let's all go down and see the boy. Well, where is he? He's on the whole fifth floor of Mr. Drysdale's bank building. <laughs> Would you look at that? Is this Jethro's agency? That's what the JB stands for, Jethro Bodine. Oh, and to think I know him when he was just a country boy like me. <laughs> you rang, JB? Yeah, Bunny, honey. Any big stars waiting to see me? Not yet, JB. Hmm. Uh, any big name producers or directors? No, JB. Yeah. Uh, okay. Don't let nobody in to see me lest they've got a big name like uh, Elizabeth Taylor or Sir Lawrence Olivier, huh? Right, JB. Who <laughs> <laughs> are well, all these folks? I reckon they're some of the stars that works for Jethro. Well, I don't see no big ones. Like Buck Jones and Pearl White. Well, there's some famous ones here. I bet Jethro won't want to mess with me. Oh, I don't, ma'am. Are you one of Jethro's famous stores? Not yet. I'm working as receptionist till he signs me to a million dollar deal. Boy's a star maker. Let's go in and see him. Wait a minute. JB only sees people with big names like Elizabeth Taylor and Sir Lawrence Olivier. Well, I reckon that lets us out. His name's Roy, mine's Jed, it's Granny, Ellie. They ain't one really big name in the bunch. That's too bad. <laughs> well, my full name is Ellie May Margaret. That's a big one. I'll tell him. <laughs> Excuse me, JB. Some people to see you. Any big names? Just one. Ellie May Margaret. The others are Jed, Roy, and Granny. Them's my folks. I can't let them hicks and hayseeds clutter up my office. Brush them off for me. I haven't got a whisk broom. <laughs> I'm talking about the Hollywood brush off. Oh, let them in. I'll show you how it's done. <laughs> JB, we'll see you now. All of us? Yeah. <laughs> Sweethearts, lovers, baby dolls. This is a real great thrill. You are one of my favorite all-time family. I just love you. I wish I could sit down and talk over old times. But my calendar's full up. Hey, call me the next time you come into town, and we'll get together at my club. Real nice seeing you now. So long. <laughs> Jethro, uh, I know you're busy, but uh, Roy here needs an agent. Oh, Roy, sweetie. I didn't see you there. Mm -hmm. Just love your app. Call Morris office. Tell him I recommended you. Well, I figured you'd be too big for me. Yeah, that's a picture, sweetie. Just ain't got room for you in my stable. He ain't gonna sleep in no stable. He's got a room at our house. Well, I just love your wit, Granny baby. Crude and colorful. Well, they ain't got no more time for this here small talk. I can't keep the whole entertainment industry waiting. Time is money, just theatrical geniuses. Come on, come on. You're getting too big for your britches, Mr. Theatrical Genius. You're headed for a fall. That's what they said about Flo Ziegfeld. But she showed him. <laughs> Gotta admit, Granny, the boy knows his show business. <laughs> oh, very harsh, Chief. You did a beautiful job redecorating this floor. Yes, it cost me a fortune. And I'll never collect a penny of rent from J.B. Boy Genius. <laughs> That's bad. That's a very impressive sign. See, wait a minute. Maybe I can rent this floor to Jack Benny. <laughs> what do you think you'll pay? About what you're getting now. <laughs> Hi. What are you doing here? Your desk is on the first floor. Oh, I work for JB now. Then give me back that $200 suit I bought you. Okay. Oh, no, no. Not, not here. Okay. Come to the club tonight and I'll toss it to you from the stage. Never mind. I want to see the boy genius. Oh, he only sees big names. You see, yours is Milburn. Mine is Jane. Oh, you'll never get in. You're just a four-letter word. <laughs> Oh, you pussycat. That's a big one. <laughs> pussycat Drysdale's here to see you, J.B. Make it snappy, pussycat. I'm putting a sharp edge to my golf game. 
the case being, or Bob or Dean calls and wants to hit a few balls over the net. <laughs> Jethro, you're holding the club wrong. Why don't you try hitting the ball with the head down? And flatten out this $25 hairdo? <laughs> Jethro, you don't want to be a theatrical agent. Why don't you go back to being a brain surgeon or a streetcar conductor? Are you kidding? Did you ever see a streetcar conductor dressed this sharp? The best he can wear is shiny blue serge and a nickel squirter. Well, uh, brain surgeons dress very nicely. Yeah. Uh, can a brain surgeon call Sophie Lauren in Rome and wrap up a big picture deal? Can you? <laughs> Get me Sophie Lauren in Rome. Right, KB. Jethro, you're spending money like water. Oh, I, I just signed for everything. But eventually, all those bills will have to be paid for. Pussy well, cat, sweetheart. I'm going to be rolling in money. Looky here. And I'll show you just what one deal can net me. Now, let's say that I get Sophie a million for her next picture. That's one million. That's one, comma, not, 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 <laughs> comma, not, 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 dot, two more not. Thanks. Oh. Now I get 10% of that, so I puts the 10 under the million and ciphers it. Not times not is not. Not, 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 not. And one times not, one times one. I done made myself $10 million. Jethro, your client gets $1 million and you get $10 million. Pussycat, that's what makes this such a great business. Ready on your call to Sophia Loren in Rome. Good thing I learned how to talk Italian. I'll speak to her in her native language. Hey, you bambina. That's a you there, that's a Mia here. You want to make a moving pitch? <laughs> that's Italian for moving pitch. <laughs> Hello. Hello? Hello. That's the trouble with these overseas calls. The cable's always breaking. Jethro, have you got any real clients at all? I was offered Cousin Roy Halsey. I've heard him. He's great. Take my advice, sweetheart. Stay out of show business. Stick to wrapping them quarters. You don't think Roy has any talent? He's country, baby. He's strictly for bug tussle. I'm the jet set agent. New York, London, Rome, Paris. That's my bag. <laughs> oh, Roy, uh, Granny says the vittles is putting there ready. Well, tell her no thanks, Mr. Clampett. I don't feel much like eating. Uh, where are you going? Back to bug tussle where I belong. I ain't good enough for Hollywood. Well, who says so? Only the biggest agent of them all, J.B. himself. He wouldn't take 10% of me as a gift. Nah, I don't pay no attention to Jethro. He says giddy up to his mouth for his mind is hitched up to. <laughs> but when the biggest flesh peddler of all won't peddle your flesh, it's time to haul it home. Well, uh, what about that fellow that seen you back there at the bug tussle Biltmore and asked you to come out here and make records? They probably caught him and took him back to the funny farm. Out in the back room, everybody. Ellie Mae! Don't set a place for me, Granny. Oh, but Roy, I made your favorite dish. Coop cobbler, groundhog gravy, and show chitlins. Thanks, Granny, but I just wind up with a lot more flesh than nobody could peddle. <laughs> Roy's going back home because Jethro won't take 10% of it. The only thing that boy's got 10% of is a brain. I'm sorry, Granny. My mind's made up. I done said goodbye to Ellie Mae. Might, might as well get started. Oh, but listen, Roy. Oh, no, Jethro's right. My speed is the bug tussle, Bill. Bill. <laughs> Bill. I'm awful sorry to hear you going back home, Roy. You are? Sure enough, I am. Well, I was hoping you'd take me along when you went to make your recording. You was? Sure enough, was. Well, I just love to hear you perform. You do? Sure enough, do. Well, it just turns me on. It does? It sure enough does. Oh, golly. Gee 